Don't forget, tomorrow is Twitch Drops, where you can pick up the Eastern Wind Sapphire set. The weapons this time, and they look glorious. I'll be starting the stream at 12pm BST. All links are down below. Let's get on with the video. Hey, you beautiful buccaneers, Falcor here. So one thing I've noticed in the game lately is a remarkable amount of new players. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed the same thing. Most of the time they're solo and they just want to chill out and level up and don't want to deal with streamers like myself holding a boom kick, listening to intense synthwave whilst making the whole situation more hyped than it actually is. Buy gifted subscriptions, we're gonna blow this man up. It's gonna be amazing, let's go! Now I stream this game regularly and apart from my main pirate, I've also leveled up two alts to Pirate Legend using this method. The most recent, Madame Assaulty, isn't she goddamn beautiful, was leveled up to Pirate Legend in 11 hours and 24 minutes. So you don't need to do high tier world events in order to level up fast. So here's my how to get Pirate Legend easy and safe whilst solo experience walkthrough hassle free amazing dot org forward slash UK. So to get to Pirate Legend, you need to get to level 50 in any of the three factions. One of the easiest factions to level up in is obviously Reapers, as they can take any loot, so you don't have to worry about what you're hauling. The only downside is you are permanently marked on the map for others to see your location, and with only one hand in spot, it could potentially cause a lot of problems as a new and solo player. So we're not going to concentrate on these fellas. That's something you can work on when you're more seasoned. Hunter's Call is also an option, but unless you want to spend the next 450 hours fishing, I would not advise it. Hunter's Call is more of an organic leveling faction that slowly trickles in as you play, or something to do when you've done everything else. So we're going to concentrate on the three OG factions, Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls, and the Merchant Alliance. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to presume you've just started the game and have no ranks in any faction, but even if you have a fair few levels in each faction, it will still serve you well. So the first faction we'll be concentrating on is the Gold Hoarders, which was once a pain in the butt to level up, but now has been made so much more simple thanks to fortresses. You see, as a new player, doing Gold Hoarder riddles or X marks the spot maps, or even Gold Vaults, will often reward you with absolute tripe treasure for the time invested. It's entirely worthless leveling up this way, and takes far too much time. But fortresses are a simple task that can be completed in around 4-5 to five minutes, and will always reward you with high tier loot, the majority of which is high tier gold hoarder loot. This is what you get from the main vault, and if you can find the key from the room above, you can also snag yourself two more ghost chests, and a gem. Sometimes you can find gold hoarder trinkets too, but this is the loot you are always guarantee. To do a fort as quick as possible, all the enemies will die in one gunshot of any gun, so equip a pistol for its fast reload time and accuracy to punch these out really quickly. As you're doing these forts, you'll also come across other loot for the other two factions, and this will bump up your grade when you're ready to tackle them. Once you've handed in enough loot to the Gold Orders and reach rank 15, you'll be able to purchase the Emissary Flag. You only have to purchase this once. When looting and putting loot on board your ship, you'll gain a multiplier for both gold and reputation for that faction, so it's vital to have this for a speedy process. Once you've purchased the flag, all you need to do is vote on the emissary table and the flag will be on your ship. But remember, if a reaper level 5 is on the server, they will be able to see your ship on the map, so it really is up to you, speed or safety. However, once reaching grade 5 in gold hoarders, you'll be able to pick up an emissary quest for the gold hoarders that will grant you high tier loot for each dig. So consider that. You'll notice that after 10 or 20 of these forts that your grade will be rising pretty fast, for little to no effort. Once you're level 40 in Gold Hoarders, you can consider trying out some of the other quests to change things up a little. The Gold Vaults, in my opinion, are the best option for this, but you'll level up just as fast running out a fortress. Once you've reached level 50 in Gold Hoarders, and possibly long before that, you should have enough money to purchase yourself a captaincy vessel. Not only is this a cool thing to have, you'll also gain access to the Sovereigns to speed up your selling progress. Process, ready for the next grind. The Order of Souls. By now, with the extra loot from the fortresses, you should be a good chunk into reputation with the other two factions, enough to purchase an emissary flag for each one. So grab the Order of Souls emissary flag, and then let's head over to the Devil's Roar. 
The Devil's Roar, although pretty treacherous for a new player, is one of the best locations to level up Order of Souls. Not only is the reputation and gold for skulls increased, you also get a helping hand from the geysers on each island to do the killing for you. The best method for grinding this faction out is to purchase a Devil's Roar bounty mission from this incredibly scary Order of Souls lady at Morrow's Peak Outpost, and just go to the islands and find the skeletons. Keep in mind, however, that the larger islands always have a chance of a volcanic eruption, so if you start to feel the ground shake, get back to your ship just in case. You might need to haul it out of there. The good news is, however, the skeletons you were fighting have likely died to the fallout, so when you get back you will have a bunch of skulls waiting for you. Another great hint for doing Order of Souls missions is to head down to any of the treasury locations on the map and grab some of those tridents. Place them in the mermaid for safekeeping and then collect them above the surface, and you literally have yourself the weapons to commit skeleton genocide. Don't forget, however, as you level up, to purchase the new ranks for the faction, otherwise the missions you'll be sent on will always give you low-grade loot, and with the ability to now sell at sovereigns, this whole process will go much faster as you reach level 50. Now, after all that fire, death, and panic, let's chill out for a moment. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's cue some, uh, let's cue some, some jazz here. There we go, because we're about to have the most chilled experience in Sea of Thieves, the merchants. Now, one of the fastest methods for leveling up merchants is the new shipwreck voyages. However, they're not particularly stable and can often bug out, and trying to locate the seagulls for the clues can often trigger you as you play. You can choose to do it this way if you wish, but nah, let's chill out. You are a merchant after all, so let's be a merchant. The most chilled out way to approach merchants is a combination of cargo runs and trade routes. Cargo runs will have you pick up cargo from an NPC and then deliver it to another NPC within the world, so pick up as many as you can of these. Trade routes have you buy commodities from merchant reps, which you can then sell for a higher price to other outposts. They have a handy little book at all the outposts telling you where to go to sell things for a higher price. But the best source of info for this is the Merfolk's Lullaby website, link in the description, that will tell you the correct routes so you can plot a good course. By mixing the trade routes with the cargo missions, you can sail around the map essentially stress-free. After all, you didn't find this loot, you were given it, so if you sink, it actually doesn't matter. Just rinse and repeat. Put on some music, heck, even watch your favourite TV show as you sail. No worries to be had at all. Just cruise yourself to level 50 after playing a few sessions and you'll come out feeling fresh, rested, and have a keen sense of accomplishment. Now take your final walk over to the tavern as a fresh-faced sailor and become a pirate legend. So you can finally do the Legend of Vel quest and possibly get sung by this guy. Let's go! Let's go! Thank you for the 50 bits! Let's go!